In this video, I'm going to be talking about creating a chamfer guide. If I have a relatively short work piece, then I could use any of these hand planes that I have in front of me for creating a chamfer. However, along the long grain, any of these planes is still good. On the edge grain, this plane in particular, this bench plane, is not quite as good as these low angle planes. And so we'll push this one aside and we'll talk about the low angle planes. So I could use either one of these planes, these low angle planes, and it will give me a nice chamfer along the long grain and the end grain. And oftentimes I'll do freehand. I'll just freehand and create a chamfer. But when this is an example of creating a freehand chamfer. It requires a steady hand, so no more than one cup of coffee. But when I have a longer board and I have to walk while creating the chamfer with the hand plane, it's often convenient to have a guide. And so my choice is to either make a guide for one of my larger planes or a small block plane. And it's a lot more convenient to have one for a block plane um, for storage and for general use than it is for this really long plane. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about making a guide for a block plane. This is a picture of the initial prototype. We'll start by making the 45 degree angle guide rails. I can now use a plane to make that 45 degree angle. So we've now made our angles and we've made our sides and our sides are gonna meet with our angles like that. And this will be the middle part of our guide. And what we need to do next is we want to create a notch right here that will allow the plane blade to extend out into the notch to help make our chamfer. And we're also going to put a small magnet on the, this the back here so that it will hold on to our hand plane. at the bottom of the data we use a router plane. So we've now fully assembled our block plane guide. There are things I like and don't like about it. So one of the things I really like was the two three eighths of an inch magnets that allowed the block plane to snap in there and hold it tight. So that was a good thing. Another thing that I liked was 
this dado that went across our two angled guides here. That was good, allowed the blade to extend so I could cre create deeper chamfers. Um, some of the things I didn't like about it, my first prototype here was I had too many pieces. Uh, in particular, the pieces along the top, the separate pieces, um, allowed for um, too much play when assembling this and it was difficult to get everything aligned. And so I can't get a very deep chamfer um, because of some misalignment in these two angle guides. So I'm going to create another prototype. We now have our two prototypes in front of us. The first prototype had five pieces, and here you can see that these different five pieces do not join together very well, and they make the angles slightly off. So when I try to make a chamfer with this guide, um, it's difficult to uh, get a deep chamfer when using this. So by using what I would call a unibody construction to where there's only three pieces, just the main outer body and the two chamfers here, then I can get a deeper chamfer and a more uniform chamfer along the tire, tire edge. So here you can see an example of that that we uh, just did. And this is a nice even chamfer along the entire length, which is what I was trying to get from my guide. So I hope this will be uh, useful in many projects to come.